Take me out to the ball game. Sung by Edward Meeker, Edison Record. Katie, Katie was baseball mad. Had the fever and had it bad. Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier in the MLB was the first step in starting the civil rights movement in America and would become a symbol of African American perseverance during a very racist time in American history. Debate Jackie Robinson was a good baseball player and wanted to show that black people are just as good as white people, but still, teams, teammates, and fans didn't want him to play because he was black and at the time they thought black people were inferior to white people. Diplomacy Jackie Robinson was allowed to play in the MLB, but he would have to endure various racist acts towards him because he was playing a white man's sport and he still needed to push that all aside and play excellently and help the Dodgers succeed. Before Jackie Robinson played in the MLB, many important things had happened in the U.S. in baseball. On August 14, 1945, President Truman announced in a conference that the U.S. were talking with Japan about surrender terms and that World War II was finally over. This meant by the time Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier, the U.S. was only two years removed from the end of World War II. The war had scared people very badly, so citizens wanted to escape from the real world and be able to relax and enjoy themselves. So many people chose baseball games as a form of escapism, so if Robinson threatened to change baseball, people did not want that to happen, because it would change the one thing keeping their life normal. Also, the U.S. was almost a decade removed from the end of the Great Depression, which had ended due to less buying and more jobs being taken and available thanks to the war. This meant that people could afford to spend extra cash and go watch baseball games. But for African and Americans, even though they were trying to support the war effort, they were still discriminated against in the military, although they were going to war and sacrificing their lives for the U.S., but it was still segregated to the point that black and white soldiers couldn't even sleep in the same room. At home, it was no different. Many public spaces were segregated, and they didn't get the same job opportunities as white people, so in America, black people always ended up being treated worse. This made them want to try and get equal rights from the government. They needed something big to happen so they can get something started. And the MLB, even though no rule was ever created that didn't let African Americans play in the MLB, there was such a deep dislike for them that teams made a gentleman's agreement to not sign them no matter how good or talented they were. Still craving a means to play, African Americans formed their own teams and bonds from across the country to find competition. To play organized baseball, the Negro American League was formed and was made up of non mlb players, some of whom played very well, but due to the prejudice against non-white players, almost none of them played in the MLB, even though they would play as good as guys like Joe DiMaggio and Lou Gehrig. Also, the league itself wasn't excluded from being discriminated against, as they would make little money from games thanks to greedy white booking agents, just because they would let African Americans play baseball. Before Robinson was promoted to the big leagues, the Dodgers players tried to sign a petition to prevent Robinson from being promoted to the big league club. In the Negro League, Jackie Robinson hit 375 with four home runs and an OPS of 1,049 in 34 games, which caught the attention of Branch Rickey. Rickey, who had spent a lot of his executive career in St. Louis, was a pioneer in the baseball world, developing the modern farm system, winning multiple World Series titles with the Cardinals, and helping take the Dodgers, a very bad team, into a team that could compete for a World Series in just a few years. One of Rickey's first acts was to sign Jackie Robinson, an infielder with the Negro League Kansas City Monarchs, to a contract. Being the pioneer he was, Ricky signed Jackie Robinson from the Negro Leagues because of his excellent play and the trait that made him stand out among other talented Negro Leaguers. What made him stand out was that Robinson would be able to withstand the pressure of being a black man in the MLB and have the mental strength to not respond to the hatred towards him and play excellently through it. Although he was succeeding, teams still wanted Robinson out of the league because he was black. Teams like the Phillies would harass Robinson constantly during the games, so much so they needed the president to stop in and get them to stop. Cardinals players planned to organize a strike so that they could get Robinson in the league since their only option to stop the strike would be to remove him. Robinson succeeded in putting the prejudice and racial strife aside and showed everyone what a talented player he was. In his first year, Jackie had a batting average of 297 with 12 home runs, an OPS of 810, and 29 stolen bases. He also helped the Dodgers win the National League pennant. He also became the winner of the inaugural Rookie of the Year due to his outstanding defense, hitting, and base running ability. When Robinson was called up to the Major League Club, his teammate Pee Wee Reese became his friend and stuck up for Robinson when he needed him. 
This was because Reese grew up in a very segregated South U.S. and since he was little, his dad had instilled in him that he must treat all the same no matter their appearance or gender. The most famous example of sticking up for Robinson is when in the middle of a game against Cincinnati, he calmly walked over to Robinson, put his arm around him, and had a friendly conversation, silencing the racist crowd because Reese had just shown that blacks should be treated like normal people as well. When Robinson broke the color barrier, the mainstream media did not view it as anything special. They portrayed Robinson as just a black man that was playing major league baseball and nothing else. They would only talk about it because he played in the MLB so no matter how hard they tried, eventually they would be forced to talk about him since they would cover the games because of how big baseball was at the time. And even when they would talk about him, they would do the bare minimum, relying on other sources, usually from black media, for quotes, and would even sometimes make up quotes because they didn't want to go and work for a black man. To the black press and its readers, the announcement signaled the beginning of what they hoped would be a new day for fairness and equality. The black community had fought for a while for baseball to get integrated, and when they finally succeeded, it showed that with Robinson breaking the color barrier, that black Americans could finally get equal rights, they were just going to have to fight for them. It also gave them confidence in movement leaders knowing that they will fight for equality for them no matter how much they would have to sacrifice. It would also cover the event heavily because they knew that Robinson was doing something that was monumental and that it could change the world forever because over time, it would get people to change the way they view black people. The short-term impact of Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier is that it sparked hope in African-American ballplayers that they too can play in the MLB someday and giving hope to other black people that things can change for the better for them. Throughout his first year, Robinson faced a lot of racism from fans and players as per the normal time, and he had to deal with things like getting harassed by players and staff on the Phillies, team signing petitions and threatening to go on strikes so that he wouldn't play, and in a newspaper by the New York Times, Robinson admitted to having a lot of death threats sent to him as well. At first, the novelty of a black major leaguer attracted the big crowds, which were bolstered by unprecedented numbers of African Americans in the stands, as well as whites who were rooting both for and against baseball integration. On the other hand, the black community was extremely excited over Robinson breaking the color barrier. Black fans flooded games in which Robinson appeared to watch someone of their own race find success in a sport that most black people couldn't. The Dodgers also enjoyed the money that Robinson produced and the mere spectacle of him playing in the MLB, causing all but the players want to keep Robinson on the team and in the league. After Robinson's debut, he made other front offices change the way they viewed black baseball players. Larry Doby was sold to the Cleveland Indians, becoming the first African-American player in the American League. And thanks to Doby and Robinson, teams realized that these players were very very good and that they could instantly improve their team if they were to just sign them. The long-term impact of Robinson breaking the color barrier is that his perseverance gave him and another significant voice to the civil rights movement. When men began fighting for equal rights for African Americans and paved the way for many of the future non-white American baseball stars who would change the game forever. In his first year with the movement, Jackie crisscrossed the country and helped to raise $1 million for the NACP. Thanks to a successful career in the MLB, he was able to begin his new business and use a surplus of money he had to donate to the organization. His new business allowed him to spend a lot of time on the civil rights movement. He used to his advantage, holding jazz concerts in his backyard and donating the funds he raised to the NAACP. In 1964, the U.S. government passed the Civil Rights Act of 1964, prohibiting discriminating people from voting or getting jobs just because of their race or gender, among other things. With help from Robertson, the civil rights activists were able to get the point of the protest across to the government that they wanted equal rights and opportunities and not be discriminated against, which wouldn't have happened if they weren't motivated motivated by Robinson breaking the color barrier in the MLB decades before. Because of Robinson making it to the MLB, other players wanted to play too, knowing it was possible. And now since black people were not accepting the league, it led to years down the road that foreign players like David Kurt Ford and Aaron, who would become fan favorites among their teams, they would make history in the MLB. Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier in the MLB was the first step in the fight for equal rights for African Americans as it gave them the hope and momentum to begin fighting for them and to become a symbol of black perseverance for African Americans for years to come. With Robinson breaking the color barrier, he changed baseball forever, allowing foreign players to play in the league and make significant impact of their own, like Kurt Flood. It also helped start the civil rights movement, which would eventually lead to African Americans and other non-white Americans getting equal treatment in America. And finally, Jackie Robinson had endured unthinkable acts towards him while having to show up and play his heart out every day and still become a symbol of hope to African Americans and other foreign baseball players. Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier was important in history because it helped African Americans and others receive equal rights from the government and paved the way for many foreign players that would eventually change the game but would not have been able to do with that if it wasn't for Robinson breaking down the color barrier years or decades before. At first, teammates and players debated that Robinson shouldn't be in the league while fans of Robinson and other teammates said he should. After a while, they took a diplomatic route letting him play without issue most times, but would still discriminate him because of his race. Just to cheer up the boys he knew, he made the gang sing this 